Hello, everybody. My name is Arun Nagarajan, and I'm with the Google Apps Script team. My name is John McGowan, and I'm a developer on Google Drive. Excellent. This session is Integrate Google Drive with Google Apps Script, and we're really excited for all of you to be here. Google Drive is a storage and collaboration platform with millions of users with billions of files. In this session, you'll learn how to write applications that provide value to those users. There are many ways to write these applications, but we'll, today we're going to focus on an exciting platform called Google Apps Script, which we think is really an easy way to get started, but also a powerful way to deliver value to these users. And we're going to tell you the story by focusing on two integration scenarios. The first one is having your application available to the user in the interface that they're already used to, drive.google.com. Really easy to remember, probably the home page for a lot of folks that are living in Google Drive. This means being available in the Create menu and also in the Open option for a selected file. And then the second part, which really goes well with the newly released service, is the ability to access those billions of files from Google Apps Script. So being able to access those files, write files, changing permissions uh, as the user from Google Apps Script. So those are the two things we're going to show you. But we think it's really important to show you this with a live demo. So we're going to start off by showing off a demo and then come back and deconstruct what we did in a nice flow. Yesterday at the keynote, you heard our leaders tell you that we have 25 million users in the education space. It's a really important uh, segment for us. It's something that these users are finding a lot of value in already. In the demo today, we're gonna, we made up an application called Quiz Manager. And the idea is to provide a little utility to teachers to allow them to take what usually is a roster in a spreadsheet and then being able to turn that into assigned assignments through a Drive document or a, document, a Google document, I should say. Now, that's what we want to show you. That's the demo we're going to build you. Some of the requirements that you should keep in mind as we're showing you this is that it should be the whole life cycle of the quiz that we want to manage, being able to start from the roster all the way to then completing the quiz. We want it to be uh, supportive, of, supportive of multiple file creation. So one of the more painful things sometimes is copying a file 15 times, renaming it appropriately, and sharing it with the right people. So we want to take that human error and pain out of the picture and have it uh, facilitate the creation of multiple files. And we want it to be completely integrated with the Drive interface. So the application itself has very little UI by itself. You work within Drive. And we want it to be built with an easy-to-use platform that's easy to tweak, uh, upgrade to what, what, what the new requirements might be, and run on the cloud. So I don't have to, as a teacher or an administrative person at the school, manage a lot of different uh, systems, right? So let's go take a look. All the code is available uh, on our system on, on GitHub, so uh, don't have to worry about getting access to the code. So I'm going to switch over to the demo laptop. So here is Google Drive. Everybody's very familiar with this. So like any good teacher, there's a lot of different applications that this teacher's already installed. What we want to do with this is install a new application into this and then be able to do some interesting things with the files in Drive itself. So now I'm going to assume the role of that teacher, and I'll play along as the teacher. So the teacher recently got an email saying, there's an awesome new application that you can install into your Google Drive, and it's really easy to install and really easy to get started, and it'll help me with my quiz management. So I'm going to click on the link to get started. It's going to show me a simple welcome screen to install the application. I go ahead and install it. A very standard trusted screen that tells me that this is from Google. Do you want me to uh, install this application into your uh, drive? This is from this user's uh, drive create assignment, and that allows me to trust that screen. I've installed it. Let me close that, go back into drive, refresh my drive window. And now we have a new option available called Create Assignment. So it makes sense as well from a teacher's perspective on what it does. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and create an assignment. So what's happening now is that this application is uh, working against the Google's drive, the user's drive, and creating the documents and the folder structure necessary for the document to exist. So I'm going to hit close here, go back to my drive, and I have a new folder called New Assignment. I'll go within it. And I see that there is now a couple of files here of interest. Uh, there is a roster. And there's also a template for quiz questions. OK? In order to facilitate the demo, I've just kind of uh, saved a sample roster. I'm going to copy and paste that in. And 
And I've also came up, uh, we've also come up with a, a quiz we think is a really good quiz to give to high school students. It's a standard Google quiz, I think. Um, all right, so what I have now is a quiz, uh, a roster, and I think I'm good to go. So now what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll hit publish quiz. And that's going to spin. And in the meantime, I'm going to switch over here on the right side of my screen. I am now a student. So that's my second persona. And what's going to happen is a new file just popped into Jane's drive. She didn't have to go and refresh anything. This is the always online collaborative aspect of Google Drive coming into play. And as far as the teacher is concerned, the application's finished for her, uh, him or her. And now there's a bunch more files for the, the teacher uh, to grade and look at. So let's go back to being a student. I am Jane. I've come back in. And OK, the first question I know the answer to. The next question, I think, is 9. This one, that's kind of beyond me. So I'm going to slack off. And let's say that I'm just going to go to a movie and not solve this quiz. In the meantime, the deadline has passed. The teacher decides now to close the quiz. No longer can you add more content to it. It's sort of like pencils down, right? That's what that button does. And that's going to now spin, and it's going to finish. And the quiz is now closed according to the quiz manager. Let's say Jane comes back, and she's feeling all wise, and she says, I don't know. This is tricky. And she tries to answer the question anyway. Google, Drive, Google Docs is going to try to save it. It's going to do its best to save what it thinks it can save automatically, but then it realizes that the permissions have been taken away from the quiz. So it's no longer a quiz where the student can work on. All she can do now is reload this page, which will bring her into her last save point. So she at least got two questions, uh, and it's now in view-only mode. Right? So at this point, she can look at the comments and the grades that the teacher is providing, but she can no longer enter any content into the quiz. So that's what the whole uh, workflow is all about, being able to start something and, and, and then, you know, as a student, take the quiz and then come back in. Cool. So all that code is available. And what we're going to do now is deconstruct what we just showed you. So what, what, did we show, what did we show you here? So we were able to take a classroom example of being able to take a roster and convert that into a set of assigned uh, documents for the quiz. We were able to work within the Google Drive UI as well. So we were able to meet that requirement. And it was one click to, to uh, publish that assignment. So we were able to take the roster and the template that was already there, and then assign that to the right people with the right privileges at the right time, and then flip that back and take it away. And you also notice that I actually used files in the folder itself to act like command runners. So when I clicked on it, it knew the context of where I was and what it meant. And operated on the files in that folder. So that's a little trick that allows you to have little executable like links from within a folder and do some interesting things. And you also notice that it was the default action for when I clicked on it. So it was sort of the default mime tab associated with it. Now, there's a lot of improvement ideas here for the viewers. We wanted to make sure that you knew what else could be done with this. This is no, by no means a finished product. It's really a set of principles that we wanted to show you. Uh, there's a lot of ways you could monitor progress. You could, you could ask. You could write a little uh, application to see when the deadline's coming up and alert the, use, the students, uh, close the assignments automatically on a time to trigger. These are things that are possible in AppScript. And also having a nice assignment dashboard of when is the student actually working on it? Has she uh, uh, not even opened the document? Things like that. So you're able to get history and things like that from the Drive service, which is pretty useful. The Drive API, I should say. So, now, that's, that was the demo to kind of show you what's possible uh, in, the, in the Google Apps Script plus Google Drive world. Now let's take you through how we built it and what some of the technical salient points are for this particular demo. So we're going to show you this in two parts. So first, I'm going to quickly introduce Google Apps Script. And then uh, John's going to give you more of the detailed deep dive on what we did in Apps Script itself. Then I'll talk about what was really important in the Google Drive SDK. And then we'll bring it all together at the end. So the, the, the important thing about Google Apps Script, I think that's uh, really exciting to show off, is the fact that it is a cloud-based JavaScript platform that allows you to do more with Google. It allows you to take apps that you already love, like Gmail, Drive, Docs, Sites, and then automate, integrate, and extend those applications. 
And you can do that beyond just the Google APIs as well. We have ability to call external services as well. So I think that's really important. And the best part of it is that you're able to write the code in a browser. So that's an actual screenshot of a, uh, the browser with the script editor loaded up. The URL is script.google.com. You can try it on your pixels. It's really easy to remember, really easy to get to. And that actually in there is a working example of a app that could archive your Gmail inbox. Uh, there's no limits. It's not uh, limited to the first 100 or something like that. So that, that'll probably time out on a large inbox. But the idea is that it's really easy to write this JavaScript. And there are things like autocomplete that make you even more productive and comfortable within this environment. The important thing that made this all possible is the fact that Google Apps Script apps can be deployed as web, web applications. So that's the screenshot of what the deployment screen looks like. That was announced last I.O., so it's really exciting for us to use this for some interesting capabilities. And what you essentially end up doing is expose these web endpoints for your business logic. And the business logic is what John's going to talk about, how we were able to take the calls and perform operations on the user's drive. We were able to also run the application to execute as the user rather than the developer that wrote it. That's really important because we're trying to save to the user's drive, not the developer's drive. So that authorization part is really taken care of for you. And you're able to, if you have Google Apps for Education or Google Apps for Business, you can restrict the application to be only available to people within your organization. So that's actually a really nice feature of Google Apps Script to uh, restrict that access pretty easily. And from a developer standpoint, all you need to do is implement a method called do get which is very familiar for folks that have done Java servlet programming, to execute the, the logic that you need, uh, receive the context that you need, and then you know, return the HTML or any content you want to return back. Really straightforward to do this. So now let's step back and look at the Drive SDK bits of this. The Google Drive SDK allows you to integrate deeply within the Google Drive UI. So it allows you to um, show your application within the Create menu and the Open option. You do that by defining the metadata in the developer console. So that's a one-time option, a process that's a, a bit of a, a different console than you're normally used to. It's developers.google.com slash console. Really easy to find once you're there. Uh, and then I'll talk you through what the, screens, uh, what the settings you need to set up are. Then you write the web application, which we'll show you, uh, which we showed you, to receive the context and perform the logic. And then at the very end of it, how does the user get your application? In our example, we installed it by visiting a link by requesting the drive.install OAuth scope. You can also have your application available on the Chrome Web Store, which is really great for discoverability, reviews, having more uh, videos and screenshots of what your app does and looks like. So that's actually really powerful as well. For our demo, it's a lot easier to just email a link and showcase that capability. But uh, I urge you to submit to the Chrome Web Store for really um, commonly used applications. So what is the life cycle of the app that we wanted to uh, demonstrate today? It takes the click from the Drive UI integration point and the create and the open option, invokes a web app with a parameter called state, then AppScript kicks off its execution of the business logic and then uses the Drive app API in JavaScript to read and write to the user's drive. Okay? So I'm going to talk about the top part and John's going to cover the bottom part, which is the JavaScript API that we talked about. So this kind of explains how Google Drive SDK and the Google Apps Script work side by side. So let's go a little deeper into the Drive SDK and talk about all the different settings that, that are important. The first thing you need to do is enable the Drive SDK service in the developer console. Really easy to find it. Just look for the Drive icon, and it's Drive SDK. Flip it on, and then you'll have a new panel in the bottom left. That has a lot of settings. It's really powerful in how well you can brand your application for mobile support, for all the different resolutions that we support. But really, the, the important ones that you have to remember to deal with are the open URL. So your, hap, your app has to open uh, at least one type of document. That's a requirement. Uh, in, the, in our example, notice that the URL is script.google.com because we published an app script app. You can register default MIME types that your application's associated with, and that's the trick that we used to have our apps open when, when you click on that icon, the little floral icon that we had. And you can make up your, your own MIME types. This is something that you're able to define ad hoc and respond to those. And you can also have the create with option available. So again, 
Notice the URL is script.google.com followed by your deployed URL. So that's really important. So those are the three things that you have to get right. The others are more about branding and the images and things like that. So what are the actions that these URLs received that we showed? They get URL encoded JSON strings. That's what a, a state parameter looks like. It's actually uh, pretty self-explanatory to see that it's the folder ID, what type of action it is, and then any user identifier. So in that case, it's saying the app, the user requested the create action while in that folder. So you can actually get the context of which folder the user is in. So you could do some nested things as well if you wanted to. And then the open option tells you, okay, which uh, files did the user want to open? And you notice that that's an array. So if you, if you allow to, if you allow the application to, it'll, allow, it'll let the user select multiple options and then open that. So in our case, since we're executing commands, it doesn't make sense to have multiple selected. So we only have one available. There's a third type of parameter called import, which we won't talk about here, but that allows you to take uh, predefined types and convert them if you wanted to in your application. Now let's talk about from a user standpoint. This is what the user saw when they visited the link. In fact, in this example, I have a couple of additional scopes requested, but in our example, it was just add to Google Drive. Very easy and simple screen that users are used to from installing applications. And as long as the user clicks on allow access, your app is now linked to the user's drive. Now, what's cool about installing applications to drive is that it's not like your uh, desktop world or mobile world where you're downloading binaries onto your machine. You're essentially linking two web applications together, one being the user's Google Drive, other being your web application, and Google in the middle mediating that and ensuring that everything is done securely and appropriately. Right? So that's really nice in that you're installing a cloud-based application is really linking uh, the domains and, and whatnot. And then the one nice bonus is that you can actually have your application be mobile friendly. So if you check an option, it'll in fact allow the user, the teacher in this case, to kick off the create assignment option from their uh, Android phone or, or smartphone. So they're able to very easily do this. Uh, it'll have the same parameters passed in, and then it'll actually uh, only work with the open option for now. Uh, the create option is not supported. But that's a, it's a nice little thing that you should do to your applications if you have a simple enough web app. So what we just saw so far is how do you make your application available within the, the Google Drive UI? What John's going to now do is talk about how do we take that invocation and then do the business logic behind it to create the files. Cool. Thank you, Arun. <coughs> so at this point, I just want to do a quick overview. Arun talked about Drive SDK and what it looks like for a developer to integrate an application with the Drive UI and also what it looks like for a user to install an application with it, uh, within the Drive UI. I'm going to talk about a new Drive service that we announced this week that really just integrates with the user's files within Drive. We created a new service for a variety of reasons. Um, if you remember, we had a docs list API before. But with the new service, we built it on top of the Drive API that we launched last year. This allowed us to provide a bunch of new features, including uh, new search functionality that we couldn't provide in the old API. This allows us to do searches on the file's metadata and mind types and stuff like that, rather than just the document's content or title. We also thought about how certain, function or certain processes was very complicated, such as getting the collection of files or folders. So we added iterators in order to make retrieving collections of files and folders much easier to do and much simpler to code. I'll give you guys a code demo of this later in the presentation. Since we are providing a new service, we decided to add some new features as well. One of the top three features that we were requested in the Docsys API was to change the ownership of a file or a folder. So we've added that into this new service. Um, I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to be doing with this, the whole service in general. I'll get into that more. Um, also, another feature that we did, since we were focusing on sharing already, is we also added the ability to change the default sharing settings of a document. So now you can share a document to an entire domain or publicly for anyone to view or edit or comment on. So, 
what does this look like? We made it a one-line change to change the default sharing uh, visibility of a file. So this one line, it will take the quiz template from Arun's demo. We take the template of the quiz and we can share it to anyone who has a link so they can view it and make a copy of it if they wish. So you can do the same thing through the Drive UI and it takes two parameters. One is the scope of people that have access to the document and the other is the permission that they have. And this is how it relates to the Google Drive UI as well. And again, I spoke about the iterators. In order to make it easier to retrieve files and folders, before you had to deal with indexing and page tokens, now it only takes a couple lines of code in order to retrieve all of the files and folders of a document. Or in this case, we're getting a quiz for a student and moving it, so we just pull it out of all of the folders that's currently in. And this is just a five-line change. At this point, I'd like to show you a quick demo of the code in action. And since we're all students of life, it's going to continue being a demo of student versus teacher. Now, I have this code here, and all, it's not production level code, it's just going to be a quick code demo. But what it's going to do is it's going to create a folder for a student, make a copy of our quiz template, copy that into the folder, and then share it with our student. So at the be beginning, it's very simple. All we do is we get the quiz template, and it is, is the same as our old API. But then we share it publicly for anyone who has a link so that they can view it, make a copy of it. Finally, we make a copy of it, calling it quiz 2.0. You know, everything online is uh, 2.0. I heard one giggle. <laughs> um, so we create a folder for our student, Jerry Bob. He was my favorite student. And at this point, we're going to take all the parents of our quiz so that we can move the quiz into Jerry Bob's folder. These four lines will remove the quiz from whatever folder it's in. When you make a copy of a document, it defaults into the same folder as the original document. So we're just trying to move it out of those folders. And then this last line will add the quiz to the uh, Jerry Bob's folder. Finally, we share the folder with Jerry Bob, and we, it will propagate down to any documents within the folder. So Jerry Bob will have edit access for the folder and the files within it. And in order to prevent cheating, uh, because Jerry Bob likes to talk with Jimmy, he sits right next to him in class. Anyways, we make sure that he is not able to share the document as well. This is a new function that we've also added. Um, so. Oops, actually, I wanted to run that. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and run this so you can see the files that it creates. Obviously, it's running the bar up here. I didn't install this app. I'm just running it within the script as a demo. Um, obviously, you can create an application that does all this for you. So we have our assignment templates over here. And you can see the quiz template is shared with anyone who has the link. And they can view it just as we wanted. And then here is Jerry Bob's folder, which is shared. And I'm going to go in and show you that Quiz 2.0 is shared with Jerry Bob. So here he is. He can edit. And also, only the older owner can change uh, the permissions. And great. So moving on. I mentioned that we have more complicated search functionality. Before, you could only search on a title or the, what the contents of a document or some high-level uh, searches. But now we've added, since we're built on top of the Drive API, we get all of that feature. So you can now search on the file's metadata. You can search for the date the file was created or modified, and also get a collection of all the files a specific user has access to. Obviously, you can also combine these together to get very granular searches and get just the files that you want. There are a few things to note with the new service. One of the things, we no longer expose email addresses. Um, this was in order to do the privacy concerns. You can still add ed editors and viewers to documents using their email address. And you can also get what kind of access a specific user has to documents as well. And once again, since this was built on the Drive API, we are able to offer a bunch of other features that we didn't have time to talk about in our presentation today. Um, but we also 
because it's also built on Google Apps Script, we were able to take care of all the authorization flows for you, as Arun demoed earlier. And it's all built into the cloud, so you can code on it wherever you want. Um, with our new Pixel, you can do this out in the grass, get yourself a tan. Uh, one thing to point out is Arun's demo was actually originally written with the old Docslist API, and it's actually really easy to migrate from the old API to the new drive service as well. Um, I went and migrated it over out in the sun, and as you can tell, I didn't get a very good tan, so it's a little too easy, but <laughs> I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to do with, uh, with, the, new dri with the Drive SDK and Google Apps Script and this new service and putting it together. Um, so hopefully you guys can go out and get a tan as well as you build some pretty cool apps. Uh, we look forward to hearing what feedback you guys have on this presentation. Um, but at this point, we are open to taking your questions. We have two microphones in the center here. Um, once again, this is Arun. My name is John. Hi. Uh, on the transfer uh, documents, ownership of the documents, is there a way to transfer ownership to Gmail accounts, public Gmail accounts, and import documents from e uh, Gmail, a public Gmail account? So you, it will follow the um, sharing permissions that you can do through the G UI. So if you can do it through the Drive UI, you can also do it through the uh, new Drive service as well. It's consistent with what you're able to do in the UI. So if your domain allows your documents to be shared outside of your domain to like Gmail accounts, then you should be able to do it with the API as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, you associate uh, files through meme types. Um, what if another app uh, also registers for that meme type? Can you prevent them from opening your file? The, the user ultimately ha uh, wins. So the, where is the Chromebook here? So the user is able to go into the manage app setting and then decide what the default is. So. Uh, I don't know which gets the default option, but, uh, but the user ultimately can decide. But you cannot prevent uh, if the user has control. The user has control, that's right. Thanks. Hmm. Uh, my question is, uh, I was in the session with forums and app scripts as well. Yeah. Is there any cross interoperability between the two? Yeah, um, well, not, not directly, but it all runs with the same ecosystem of Google Apps Script. So you could conceivably write an app that you're able to have an icon in the Create option that, when you click on it, creates five new Google Forms. So yeah. it, you're able to script. We even use all the different APIs together and build some interesting workflows just like you Could described. you even do it the other way, where uh, the form, you could attach maybe an assignment to the form and have that go into um, what Drive? I'd have to think about that a little bit. Maybe you can chat in the office hours, but okay. you'd have to manage that linking yourself. Oh. Yeah. Hi, I'm Devash Pramanik from Cloud Code. So, a couple of questions. First, uh, uh, when I'm copying a document using the APIs, is there any way to copy the script associated with the document, like spreadsheet? When I copy a spreadsheet through an API, the script doesn't get copied. Is that right? Yeah, it's only the document gets copied. Um, the script doesn't get copied. Okay. I, I wasn't familiar. Was that only for documents or also for spreadsheets? Spreadsheet, uh, sites, everything. Whenever I try to copy site or copy document. So copying from the UI is copying the scripts, but not. No, I'm, from... I'm using APIs to copy spreadsheet or document Got, sites. Okay. Only the, the content get copied, the script doesn't get copied. OK, we'll have to investigate that. OK. Uh, yeah. Uh, second thing is about performance of app script. Is there anything that you have standard best practices by which we can optimize performance? Because as the data start increasing with associated spreadsheet, it start degrading, and there's a then. Oh, so is there any best practices that you have? Or yeah, something? so there's actually a section on our website about how do you optimize spreadsheet based access. There's batch access and batch writes. Mm -hmm. At some point, you may even exceed those thresholds. Yeah. Uh, it's not a, a spreadsheet's not a database. You know, we have other products like Fusion Table and Big uh, BigQuery that solve the millions of rows problem. Um, so it's there's the there's a fine line there somewhere, but. For hundreds of rows, even thousands of rows, I've seen the, if you use the batch access methods that we have, you're able to get decent performance. Yeah. And there's also caching available. So if you can prevent from going back into the spreadsheet every 10 minutes or whatever the threshold is, that might also help performance. The caching service. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my question is about finding the scripts that I create. Like, 
I've created scripts for documents before and I have to open the document and then go to script manager to find them. With these that aren't necessarily linked to a particular document, will they just show up in my drive list? Yeah, yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so scripts, depending on how you create them, are first class items in drive. Okay. So if you create them from the create menu here or go to script.google.com, they're considered top level scripts and they will show up here and you can share them and move them into a folder just like any other file. But if they are within a spreadsheet or within a document, think of it's almost like an image embedded in that document. So it kind of gets uh, encapsulated within the document and you share it and, uh, with, that, with the document itself. It's okay. not a separate item. Excellent. It's called container bound scripts is the term we use. And my question is, uh, can documents created with the Drive SDK or app script, um, scripts that you make be made available offline? Uh, yes, you can, they can be made available offline, but you can't edit them offline. Um, like, unless it's like a Google document uh, that has offline enabled. So it's just a read-only view? Uh, well, it, it should manage what the, the, the sync tool already does. Um, so I'll have to think about that one. That's a really interesting question. You come by the office hours okay. right after yeah. this. We can give that a we'll try. do a quick test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you said that you'd removed the email addresses from the API. So is there, is there any way to get a list of documents that a user has access to? Or, or get the u if you've got a document, get the list of users who have, have access to that document? You can get a list of documents that a user has access to using the uh, search functionality. Um, however, at this point, you can't get a list of email addresses uh, that have access to a document. Okay, so if I know, I know a particular document, I can't see who, who else has access to that. Correct. Okay. You can ask for, if you, if you also know an email address and you know the document, you could say, does this person have access? Yeah. But that's about it. You cannot just get a list of all email addresses against okay. the document. Is that even in uh, Google Apps for Business, if the document is... That, that's correct. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Hmm? Hi. Uh, re regarding the, the other question about searching for your script uh, files, uh, when you have hundreds of documents, how is, is there any way you like to look into just the script files you have? Because it's complicated like scrolling down between all the documents to, found, to find just the script ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good, good idea. Write a script to find all your scripts. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what, what could be um, solved, what, what we have that would solve that. You should be able to search, do searches for uh, based on script in the advanced search functionality. Um, I'm not sure yeah, if you can. Yeah, there, there's no script there. There is no script there. All right. All right. <laughs> Point uh, taken. Yeah. <laughs> but you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's what I do. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Hi. Uh, regarding the drive search, is there, did wildcards make it into the new version? The, we did not update the drive API with this, but this is, since it's based on the drive API, we offer the same func search functionality as the drive API. But wildcards no. are not in? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think the answer is no. Nope. Not okay. at this point, yeah. Not at Thank this you. point. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, is there any access to the version control functionality that's inside documents and spreadsheets via the, uh, via the SDK? The new drive service? The versioning inside documents. Oh. So one of the things I'm trying to do is to try to version lock uh, aspects of a document or a document at a certain moment in time. And I've not managed to find any way of looking into the versions. OK. Um, at this point, we don't support that in the drive service. Um, that we just launched for AppScript. Uh, I think you can get the, up, the change log using the Drive API, though. Okay. That's only for binary files, though. The, the Google Docs script industry isn't exposed to any API right now. But we know that you're bad for doing that, and... Uh, you're bad, did you say? <laughs> yeah. He's bad. Okay. That's the guy you want to convince. Uh, figuring out ways of making ourselves feel less bad about that. <laughs> Not solving the problem, just feel that's Okay, right. I mean, just version control is a big deal for legal audit trial for a lot of, a lot of enterprises, yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. I think to the earlier question, if you type or go into Google Drive and created with, I think you can choose app script to bring up your app scripts. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, also with the doc list, uh, are we going to, you're going to deprecate that over a period of time? Yep. Uh, so docs list is deprecated. 
Uh, there's no sort of date announced at this point where that'll be turned off, but it's standard deprecation policy, so we have a, an alternative now in Drive App, so we encourage you to shift over. Okay. And like John said, it was actually a very straightforward exercise. We've taken care to ensure that the APIs are pretty consistent, so um, it should be sort of an afternoon type thing. All right, thank you. Hello again. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, revision history, is there any roadmap to have Drive be involved with Vault? Good question. Um, I don't have any updates on that. Okay. It's a good question. Do you know? I do not know. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, question about delegation. Yeah. Will it support delegation, the Drive API in, in AppScript eventually? <laughs> so that, that's something that we're working on in Drive API, or we, we know about. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, Drive API doesn't support it, so we can't support it with the Drive service either since we're built on top of them. So one of the, the things Drive you can do with AppScript is that you can run it as the developer, and yes. that the developer has admin rights, some of those things will come through. But what is difficult is the hybrid models of run partially as the user and run partially as the administrator. Mm -hmm. Those are the situations that become difficult. Okay. But if you think about building your application, knowing that there's two options, run as, a, run as a developer and run as the user. You can actually build most use cases through uh, if you just kind of think through that and with that lens. Okay, now what I've seen, what I've done but not with AppScript is delegation. Like you, you can install the, the scope in the uh, domain and then you can act uh, as an administrator. You are, the user is the administrator but can specify which user to pretend to be. Uh, that's something that you are considering integrating into AppScript? We, we're looking into it, yeah. Okay. No updates at this point. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, this might be slightly off topic, but I was curious if we're gonna have any options to export in native format from, from Drive coming anytime soon. I mean, I realize that Word export is, you know, we're, uh, Microsoft exports and OpenDoc are pretty high fidelity, but there's a lot of, in my situation, there's a lot of users who are transferring data from one account to another, and they end up exporting and converting it, and then up, up, ah. uploading it and converting it to a different account via takeout or for, via the drive interface. So theoretically, you could build that with a set owner uh, API. So okay. you could theoretically say, run a script that iterates through all my files and sets the owner to another Google account. As long as you're, it, when you're in Google Apps, though, I'm in Google Apps Education, and uh, whenever we tried to do that to get out of the domain. Education it, has that limitation. It will, it will kill. So we have people leaving, or, or for example, seniors graduating high school, and we're forcing them to export everything and then giving instructions to make a new Google, you know, Gmail account or at their university to upload everything. Ooh. Because they can't, you know, it, it just it comes to a standstill when you try to script out an export in, you know, or, uh, excuse me, a, a owner change. Oh, okay, yep, I think that's a documented setting with Google Apps for Education. We'll, we'll look into how to solve okay. this, this particular Thank problem. You. you can make a copy, that's right. Hello. Um, will, uh, will we ever be able to share scripts across domains? Scripts across, you, you can share scripts across domain already. Uh, it's just like any other file. So what you can do is, um, it's easy enough to. So, but, uh, so a whole domain. So for example, I wanna share this script to this whole domain. Everybody from this domain that is not mine can access the script. So I know I can do it specifically to one person. I see. So I think we have time for one more question. We will be at the office hours right after this. All right, this isn't as much a, a question, Aaron, but uh, I just want to plus one what uh, Doug said very strongly. We have the same kind of a situation at the University of Minnesota where we're trying to move people between domains. We have five different campus accounts, like domains, and we'd love to like just update the metadata on your end to, to my, you know, push them all into one domain. They uh, find and replace across all of Google from one email address for a different email address. 
the left hand side's the same, the right hand side changes a little bit, a few Got characters, it. and then everybody would be super happy. Got it, so this is, okay. It's because, cool. it's because like, you guys showed you want to, you can make it so you can share something with that whole domain. Well, yeah. we've got some things that now brought, uh, are across campuses, between multiple campuses, and you try to share it with whole domain, it's like, I've shared it with all, whole domain, oh, except for all the people in Duluth. Got That's it. That's 30,000 people, so I tried to think of like, well, what could, could I make an all at Duluth and share with that too? But then it, it doesn't really work well. Got it. it would show up um, nowhere until they would click a link and you know stuff like that to, to be able to see the thing in their side. And it could be much easier to just have everybody all in one organization. Understood, thank okay. you. Cool. All right, guys, thank you so much for all the questions and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.